begins with a young lad regaining consciousness in a hospital's mortuary with no memory of how he ended up there. Bewildered and eager to get away, he stealthily exits the morgue, causing a nurse to shriek in surprise. Subsequently, he is led to a ward where he encounters a woman named Rudy who seems worried about him. Not long after, the boy faints and when he comes to, he attempts to escape once more. This time, however, he is met by a group of individuals with eerie expressions on their faces. In his desperation to evade them, he scales a window and navigates along the ledge. Regrettably, he loses his footing and falls from a significant height, but just before he hits the ground, the building inexplicably tilts, allowing him to land on its side. At that moment, a man who looks like a window washer approaches him and introduces himself as the guardian. He reveals that the boy's memory has been wiped clean and he is now a spirit given a second chance at existence. The boy finds himself inhibiting the body of Min, a teenager who recently did something unimaginable to himself. After this discourse, the Guardian reverts the building to its upright state, forcing Min to grasp the edge of the window. Despite the odds, Min manages to hoist himself up and re-enters through the window, and upon his return to the ward, a nurse enters and attempts to inject him. In retaliation, Min throws a saline bottle, only to see its components suspended in mid-air. The nurse then reveals herself to be the Guardian, who appears to have the ability to assume any shape. The Guardian describes Min's body as a temporary residence and gives him a hundred days to discover the cause of Min's death, cautioning that failure will lead to his eternal death. He then presents the boy with an hourglass to monitor the hundred day period. The following day, Min is examined by the doctor, who is taken aback by his recovery, despite having been dead for the entire day. Regardless, the doctor views it as a positive development and releases him from the hospital. Subsequently, Rudy, who is actually Min's mother, Mother, drives him home. Upon reaching, Min learns that he had an elder brother called Men who seems to harbor resentment toward him for some reason. He also encounters his father who seems to have quit his job as a university professor to embark on a career in a multi-level marketing, specifically peddling supplements. For the moment, Rudy requests Men to share his room with his brother as she doesn't want to leave him by himself just yet. Later on, Min tries to ask about the day he did the unspeakable, but his mother declines to talk about it. During the night, Min stealthily leaves his room and starts investigating the house. He goes through various picture frames and albums, but is unable to locate any photos of himself. He then proceeds to his own room, only to find that it's locked. When Min attempts to get a glimpse inside, he is spotted by Men, who in a fit of anger orders him back to bed. The following day, an anxious Min scales the window, navigates along the ledge and gains entry into his room. However, all he finds is a single photograph of himself, displaying his birth and death dates. Soon after, Rudy steps into the room and questions if he's planning to do something extreme again, and Min refutes it and questions about his possessions, to which Rudy responds that he was the one who got rid of of everything. Shortly thereafter, he succumbs to her emotions and holds Min in a tight embrace and questions why he resorted to such an extreme measure. The next day, Min makes up his mind to resume his education. As he was getting ready, he stumbles upon a brooch and his mother's business card and his wallet, and it is at this point that it's disclosed that Rudy is an engineer employed in a far-off province. Subsequently, she takes him to school, and before they part, she advises Min to conceal the truth from everyone and tell them that he was absent due to the flu. At school, he comes to understand that Min has a limited circle of friends, and with Lee being his sole confidant. Min harbors feelings for a classmate named Pai, who was an accidentally gifted student and his study partner. And both Pai and Min are members of the card stunt club. Consequently, he attends their subsequent gathering, where the leaders remind Find him of his responsibility to finish their sketch for an impending contest. Amidst all of this, Min observes another student spotting brooches identical to the one he found in his wallet. He soon learns that these brooches are a symbol of the outstanding students of the Olympic class. Intrigued, he decides to don the brooch and join the Olympic class, but is promptly discovered by the teacher and expelled. Subsequently, Min encounters Pai in the library while seeking help with his students and is mesmerized by her attractiveness. No matter how many times you reincarnate him, 
just like the previous incarnation of Min, he will always be drawn to Pai. Slowly, the spirit residing in Min's body starts to accumulate to his new existence and becomes at ease. He devotes a considerable amount of time with Pai and they both appear to enjoy each other's presence. On a certain day, Min's father pays a visit to the school and reminds him of a scheduled meeting with his therapist. He also hands Min some of his own merchandise to promote. Later on, Min goes to the therapy sessions, during which the therapist probes into Min's private life with intrusive questions. However, as the boy attempts to respond, the therapist suddenly breaks a bottle of the product, causing its components to disperse in the air and reveals himself to be the Guardian. It becomes clear that the Guardian's objective is to keep Min focused on his mission and discourage him from getting sidetracked. The Guardian underscores the pressing nature of the time slipping away and urges Min to to unearth the truth promptly. Furthermore, he notifies Min that the hourglass he had previously given him will automatically stop once he uncovers the truth. In the ensuing scene, we observe the students engrossed in the school celebrations, but Pai seemed to be troubled. Min approaches her and learns that she is upset because she's struggling with certain problems, and Pai is not anxious that she might not secure a top-ranking medal this time round and is afraid of letting everyone down. Hearing her concerns, Min tries to boost her morale with reassuring words, and he also queries if they're in a relationship, but Pai refuses it, stating that he never proposed to her, and as the evening unfolds, the pair spend a delightful time together, engaging in games, making wishes, and watching the fireworks. While perched on the rooftop, soaking in the view, Pai comments on how much Min has evolved compared to his former self. Min then questions her about which version of him she prefers, to which she responds that she will provide an answer in a few days. The next day while at home, Min accidentally hears his mother's phone's conversation with his father, and she seems to be furious because of the avaricious man traded her wedding ring for commercial interests. In an attempt to comfort his mother, Min accompanies her and helps her with various chores in the kitchen. Several days later, Min and Pai find themselves seated together when Pai surprises him with a birthday day present. It was a handmade kaleidoscope, a thoughtful gift considering Min's known affection for such items. During their conversation, Pai addressed a question Min had asked earlier, expressing her preference for the Min of the present over the past self. Their relationship takes a beautiful turn as they share a passionate kiss, and the following day at school, Min was sketching Pai on a bridge when he spots a collection of photos. In the background of these photos, he can see his past self standing next to a locker. Intrigued, Min walks up to the same locker and forcibly opens it, only to discover that it's empty. Shortly after, Lee comes up to him and tells him that he had left his laptop in her locker a few days ago. Lee goes on to explain that she visited Min's home that day, but couldn't find his mother, so she decided to give the laptop laptop directly to Min. After discovering this, Min rushes home and searches Men's room for his laptop. He finds family photos with his face scratched out and documents showing Men's wish to study abroad. He checks Men's computer and finds a chat between Men and his ex-girlfriend where Men blames Min for his failed plans to study abroad. Men wishes Min had never left the hospital. Min finds a note from his past self but before he can read it, Men throws the laptop out the window. Min retrieves it and reads the note, learning he ingested poison due to hatred for his father and brother and love for his overworked mother. On a certain day, Min makes a visit to the Olympic class with the intention of seeing Pi, and he covertly watches from the entrance and is appalled to see her teacher behaving improperly with her. To his surprise, Pi doesn't react or resist, and the following day, Min confronts the teacher, landing a strong punch on his face, and then escorts Pi out of the class. Once outside, Min insists on knowing the truth about their relationship, and Pi admits her dislike for the teacher, but explains her silence as a necessary sacrifice for her academic success. She even requests Min to apologize to the teacher, fearing that this incident might endanger her future prospects. Overwhelmed by rage, Min flatly refuses and walks away in a huff. 
Later, Min's father shows up at the school and is compelled to apologize to his son's behavior. Later on, while in the car, he reprimands Min for his actions, and in response, Min confronts his father, expressing his anger about how he pawned his mother's wedding ring for his ill-advised business pursuits. Saddened by these occurrences, Min takes a bus to his mother's residence in a different province. His heart, however, plummets when he finds his mother cohabitating with her clandestine boyfriend. Overwhelmed by the sudden onslaught of these startling revelations, Min flees in tears and finds himself standing alone on a bridge drenched in the pouring rain. In an instant, the droplet of rain halts mid-air, and the guardian, taking the form of a young girl, draws near to him. Min confides in the guardian, saying that the cause of his death was his family's situation and Pai's betrayal. Yet the hourglass continues its course, signifying Min's incorrect conclusion. The guardian then notifies him of the remaining remaining three days, he has to discover the right answer just before leaving, and subsequently, Min retreats to his home, expressing his anger by wreaking havoc on his personal items in the room. Not long after, Lee pays him a visit, inquiring about the completion of his sketch assignment. Overwhelmed with anger, Min retorts harshly to Lee, and he goes on to assert that he never held any affection for Lee, as evidenced by the absence of her name in his notes. This confession devastates Lee, who would never reciprocated the contempt Min received from others, and Min's parents were at a restaurant when his dad gives Rudy her ring back, causing her to confess about her own affair. Afterwards, as Min and Rudy argue while driving, they get into a serious incident. Min only has minor injuries, but Rudy wasn't as lucky. In the subsequent scene, Min arrives home to find a meal prepared by his mother, and he also gazes at the present pie had bestowed upon him, sparking remorse of his earliest tantrum. This sudden realization illuminates the abundance of affection and support surrounding Min, and with this newfound understanding, he sets out to make the most of his remaining days, reconciling old disputes and settling unresolved matters. In the end, he also accomplishes his sketch for his stunt club. The following day, the Olympic team was engaged in competition, and prior to that, Pai was summoned to give a speech. However, the sight of Min and the crowd induces guilt in her, prompting her to flee. Min trails her to the classroom and attempts to console her, reassuring her that he harbors no resentment toward her. After a short dialogue, they find themselves in each other's arms, mending their strained relationship. Bolstered, Pai approaches the prince and bravely exposes the teacher's misconduct, and cautious of Pai's limited time for sketching, Min leaves his finished piece on her desk, lifting her spirits for the impending competition. On his last day, Min apologizes to Lee for everything he has done to her, and they observe the school's car stunt rehearsal, featuring an old design of Min submitted by Lee. The unveiled stunt mirrors the new Min's design, making him realize that he was Min in a past life. That's when the memories came flooding back, and he stumbles and falls down the stairs, then envisions himself with the Guardian, admitting his death was due to his negativity. The Guardian commends him, revealing the test was a trick to uncover truth, and advises Min to approach his new life positively. Min regains consciousness on the school's steps, brimming with happiness, and warmly hugs Lee. He then rushes to the hospital to reconcile with his mother and mend their relationship. From that day forward, Min returns to his everyday life, immersing himself in a world filled with delight and contentment.